Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Celtic laboured to a win last night over St Mirren, obviously winning 2-1 in the end with a late goal in the 83rd minute by O of all players. But the big news of the evening at the start of the game was the fact that Cameron Carter-Vickers was missing. And we've got an update on that in this video. Make sure that you give the video a thumbs up as it does help with the algorithm. And tell me in the comments where you're watching the video from today. Anyway, back to Cameron Carter-Vickers. It was obviously a big shock last night when he was missing out the team and Nat Phillips was in the team. Everyone thought it maybe be just to rest the player, which it was kind of in a way. Celtic manager Brendan Rodgers revealed the thinking behind the decision to leave Cameron Carter-Vickers out the 2-1 victory last night. And let's face it, the American centre-back has been absolutely fantastic since he joined Celtic. And who was omitted from the game last night and Loney Matt Phillips was brought in to partner with Liam Scales. Despite having his injury problems over the last year um, and undergoing surgery, Rod Roger clarified that it was always a conscious plan to rest Cameron Carter-Vickers due to the 25-year-old still having a few issues with his knee. Now remember, this is the knee operation that he went in for um, before the end of last season and we thought that was going to solve the problem but it seems it hasn't he still has issues with that knee which isn't the best news that Celtic fans were probably looking for this morning um, he obviously had um, an, another issue that kept him out of the team this season also he had a little bit of a hamstring but speaking to the BBC Sports Sound after the game last night Brendan Rodgers said it was the game plan to bring him out he's still working on his knee and has some issues around that. He's played a lot of games in a small period of time, says Brendan Rodgers. So this is a chance for him to recover and be ready for the weekend and beyond that. It's really an important time of the year with a lot of games coming fast and thick there um, in December. Um, and with three really important Champions League games still to play. So it was probably the right choice. But it is a bit of a worry going into the second half of the season that if he's still got an issue with that knee that he had an operation on uh, towards the end of last season, remember that as soon as we beat Rangers um, in a, a meaningful game uh, last season, uh, we, uh, we took him out of the team. We took him out of the team and he went away and got his operation. The Celtic boss going on about the game last night was full of praise for O, oh, the South Korean um, player made a strong contribution and the fact that he got player of the, the match was uh, quite unbelievable Can considering he came on as a second half sub. The Northern Irishman said, uh, so, uh, Brendan Rodgers said that it was, uh, listen, it's one of those ones, you know the game lasts 90 minutes plus, uh, you trust the team, they've scored late goals already this season, it's, it's the makeup of this club, they keep going and they preserve. Talking about O has been uh, the paper down in his uh, home country, the Korean John Daly, uh, oh, scores a late winner as Celtic beat St Mirren as the headline in, in that paper. Uh, oh, scored his first goal in the 23-24 season on Wednesday, finding a late effort to lock in a win for Celtic uh, in a tough clash with the third place St Mirren. The Scottish Premier leaders uh, struggled to get the job done at Celtic Park in Glasgow, falling behind in the seventh minute. Um, when Connor exploited a tepid defence, it says, uh, to head in the opening goal. A tepid defence, most certainly. I mean, um, Connor managed to get that head in between Scales and Greg Taylor. And Greg Taylor was shouting at the fact that Scales should have been marking the player better. Uh, the, the Korean daily went on to say, he said, uh, Celtic uh, did not trail for long with David Turnbull scoring the equaliser in the 18th minute uh, to tie things up again. Turnbull had a shot putting Celtic ahead with the penalty in the 29th minute, but failed to make it count. Oh, he came on as a substitute for Turnbull in the 74th minute, did make his chance count, picking up the pass from o and uh, from Odin in the 83rd minute. And O made the short, short work of it in the St. Martin goalkeeper, um, hammering it past to go into the goal. <laughs> That's fantastic read from... Uh, the Korean paper. Next one up is uh, the Australian, the West Australian paper. Um, having a look at that this morning, just to see what the headlines are, because it's always good to get a different take on the media around the world, because there is Celtic fans all around the world, as we know. Celtic back to winning ways against St Mern and the SPFL is the headline. Celtic have to come from behind to beat St Mern to keep their five-point lead at the summit of the SPFL. 
O scores a late one. Uh, the league leader Celtic come from behind to return to winning ways with a 2-1 victory over third place St Mirren in the Scottish Premiership. And they seem to be making a big fact about it. That they were the third place team, um, which is, is good for St Mirren's point of view. It's good for St Mirren. It's still hard to think that St Mirren are the third best team in the country. They've had a cracking start to the season. And we did say last night on the lives before the game that it would be a hard game last night. And the, the, Australian, the West Australian paper went on to say St Mirren, who were missing... Um, a player Keanu and had fellow Socceroos Ryan Strain in the side took the shock lead in the seventh minute on Wednesday night uh, when Connor nodded his goal uh, for the goal from Greg Kilty's cross host Celtics brought it level just out over 10 minutes through David Turnbull's curling effort from the edge of the area the decisive moment in the game came in the 83rd minute when O collected a pass from Odin uh, before lashing it home for Celtic who drew now now with Hibernian the last time out. The goal was terrific. Uh, of course, you can never be sure, uh, said Brendan Rodgers. You know that this team will keep on going to the end and it's just a case of keeping that five-point lead at the top of the table. Um, and then they, they go on to talk about the Seth Korean game last night and then and the Aberdeen game. I was interested to see that Aberdeen actually won 4-2 over Motherwell. Anyway, back to some Celtic news. And uh, This morning... Brendan Rodgers is obviously chuffed about the fact that we did get that win, but we did labour last night, we did labour last night, and it is a bit of a worry that when you look at the bench, everyone thought it didn't look like a strong bench last night, but hats off to O, O really needed that goal last night, I thought that he, he took it really well, he smashed it into the back of the net, is this the turning point, there's always, always a game, and there's always a turning point in a Celtic player's career, that you get that first goal, you know, and maybe that's the goal that he needed and that's the bit of, you know, encouragement that he needed to crack on from here. And maybe he's going to turn out to be that player that we all hoped that he would um, to come on as a super sub and score some cracking goals. We definitely need him to start scoring on a regular basis because, um, let's face it, there's games where... Although Kyogo can score goals every game, there's games where he just doesn't get into the positions or he's just a little bit unlucky. He was unlucky last night with that one where the keeper just gets his hand to it and uh, puts it wide uh, towards the end of the game. But it is what it is. We won. We're still five points clear. Tell me what you think about in the comments about the game last night. And tell me what you think about the atmosphere because uh, there was a few comments from people that were at the game last night on the channel after they came away from the game and, and they said it was a really tough night. It was wet. It was dreek. There was no atmosphere at all. Obviously, there was a bit of atmosphere before the game um, when the boys section were there making some noise and then they decided to walk out the stadium. They decided to do a protest uh, and walk out the ground. Um, but that's a conversation for another day. Tell me what you think about the atmosphere. Do the boys in the Green Brigade make the make Celtic part what it is these days? It was quite disappointing uh, with the atmosphere when you heard it on the tele. And even Peter Grant said on Celtic TV in the first half, he said the players need to get their, their heads down and just play football. Um, they can hear the grumbles from the stand, which uh, wasn't good at that point in the game. And that was obviously when we went 1-0 down. But when we look back on the game, obviously the the touches, sometimes we just get some magnificent run of play and we did do that. And even the manager said it, says he was really pleased with the winning goal last night. It was a great finish, nice little combination with Kyogo and Odin. And who could shoot if he wasn't going to be so selfish? Um, but he plays a lovely pass to Big O, who takes a touch. And then a wonderful, absolutely wonderful finish. I'm really pleased for him. I'm really pleased for the guys who aren't playing much football, said Brendan Rodgers. You, you always have to recognise and acknowledge their efforts, which they did last night. He says yeah, they all look after their bodies, their diet and everything is all superb. They're all professional players. And then when they get their chance, they have to take it. And what an impact O made last night. So on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around the world still top of the league looking down on the Rangers.